While the rest of the aviation world is moving toward composite aircraft, ultra-efficient engines, and automated flight control systems, Russia has chosen to revive a machine that first took shape in the early 1990s. Strangely enough, this retro design is now being praised as if it hides something that the West could never have anticipated. This is the 2214, a symbol that carries both the pride and the defiance of Russia. And what it brings to the table might just make Western manufacturers feel outclassed. So what exactly is this mystery? How can it threaten the West? Let's find out. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia's entire aviation industry crumbled with it. Factories that once built legendary aircraft were left to gather dust, while the nation's airlines became almost entirely dependent on Boeing and Airbus together, making up more than 80% of the country's civilian fleet. The once proud names, Ilyushin Tupolev Yakovlev, slowly disappeared from the skies. Domestic projects were abandoned, research stagnated, and Russian technology fell decades behind. As the West advanced with quieter, lighter, and more fuel-efficient airliners, Russian planes were dismissed as outdated, noisy, and fuel-hungry banned from most of the global airspace. But history has never been something that ends so easily. When sanctions completely isolated Moscow, a bold decision was made to revive what had once been forgotten, and just like that, the 2214 returned. However, the mystery lies in this. Why did Russia choose to revive an aircraft design from the Soviet era instead of investing its resources in more modern projects? What makes the Tu-214 a strategic trump card and a symbol of a powerful resurgence rising from the ashes of dependence is the key to that mystery. The Tu-214 stands as a living testament to Russia's enduring philosophy of rugged practicality in aviation, design a twin-engine jetliner that embodies not just engineering strength, but the very spirit of survival and self-reliance. Developed as a variant of the Tupolev Tu-204, the Tu-214 was intended to rival the American Boeing 757, the narrow-body workhorse that once dominated medium-haul routes. Since its first flight in 1989, the aircraft has evolved through several iterations, yet its story is not one of mass production or commercial success. Instead, it represents a unique approach to aviation, a machine built to operate where others cannot. At first glance, the 2214 immediately impresses. Its design exudes a no-nonsense solidity, a kind of muscular simplicity that feels more military than civilian. Every line, every bolt seems to say this aircraft was built to endure. One of its most striking features lies in the landing gear. Unlike the Boeing 737, which has two main wheels on each side, this aircraft boasts four large tires per side. This design allows the aircraft to land on rough, uneven, or poorly paved runways, even on remote airfields where Western jets would hesitate. That's why many pilots affectionately call it the off-road SUV of the skies, a giant machine that can go almost anywhere. Powering this beast are two PS90A turbofan engines mounted under the wings. Each delivers more than 16 tons of thrust capable of lifting the 100-ton aircraft with quiet confidence. They consume roughly 4,000 liters of fuel per hour, an impressive balance between power and efficiency for an aircraft of this size. With a range of 6,500 to 7 to 200 kilometers, it can comfortably handle flights from Moscow to Dubai, Hong Kong, or even the Arctic without refueling. Besides, a FADEX system manages its PS90A engines, but in typical Russian fashion, there's always a manual backup. If the computer fails, pilots can revert to direct throttle control, a reassuring nod to redundancy and self-reliance. This dual philosophy, modern yet fail-safe, is one of the aircraft's most distinctive engineering choices, showing that safety and pragmatism can coexist. Another fascinating detail is the engine placement. On the 2214, the engines are mounted higher above the ground than on comparable Boeing models, meaning they don't need the flattened undersides that Boeing had to adopt for the 737 to avoid ground strikes. Tupolev didn't need to make that compromise because the aircraft's ground clearance was already generous. This allows it to operate more easily on debris-prone or snowy airfields, a small design choice that speaks volumes about its intended purpose. Moreover, the aircraft also takes a unique approach to anti-icing. Instead of heating the entire wing surface like most Western jets, only key sections are heated. The rest relies on aerodynamic design and cold-resistant materials. This selective heating reduces weight and energy consumption while maintaining safety in sub-zero conditions. Tupolev's engineers have always excelled at designing aircraft capable of surviving the Arctic, and the 2214 continues that legacy beautifully. Next, walk along its fuselage, and you'll see a structure that looks almost muscular-thick aluminum panels riveted tightly together, unapologetically industrial. It's not sleek or polished like an Airbus, but that's not the point. This aircraft wasn't built to dazzle, it was built to last. While Western manufacturers obsess over minimizing weight, 
Tupolev prioritizes durability, field repairability, and resilience. In remote regions with limited maintenance facilities, such mechanical toughness is not just an advantage, it's essential. Not only that, but the doors are impressive. The passenger and cargo doors are heavy solid and designed to withstand extreme cold, high pressure, and harsh winds. Standing beside this aircraft, you can't help but feel small, its massive wheels nearly as tall as a person, its wings spreading like a metal canopy. Only up close do you truly appreciate the scale and strength of this aircraft. In terms of size, the Russian aircraft is slightly larger than the Boeing 737-800. Both are narrow-body medium-range jets, but the Tu-214 is heavier, tougher, and more capable of long-distance flights. If Boeing's focus is on efficiency and lightweight performance, Tupolev's is on endurance on making sure the plane can keep flying no matter what. But all those impressive things are just on the outside. Inside, everything is even more remarkable. Step inside the passenger cabin, and the experience is unlike anything on a Western airliner. The interior isn't luxurious, but it's honest. It feels sturdy, purposeful, and refreshingly simple. The aisle is a bit narrower than on the A320 or 737, but the seats are surprisingly spacious. The 3-3 layout feels familiar, but the seat pitch, about 31 to 32 inches, offers ample legroom even for someone 1.8 meters tall. Overall, the 2214 can accommodate between 155 and 210 passengers, depending on the cabin configuration. The seats are thickly padded and the headrests are adjustable, creating a sense of comfort that belies the aircraft's rugged exterior. Noise levels are another pleasant surprise. Despite the raw power of the PS90A engines, the cabin is well insulated far quieter than the older 2154 generation. The materials used in the interior are strong and solid with no creaking panels or plastic flex. The windows are large and thick, designed to withstand greater pressure differentials and extreme temperature variations, particularly important for operations in icy high-altitude regions. Lighting throughout the cabin is soft and even, not the flashy color-changing lead of modern Airbuses, but functional and soothing nonetheless. Besides, it's a cabin that feels dependable rather than decorative, a space built for people who value function over flash. But it is only in the cockpit that one can truly see what makes this aircraft so different. The moment you open the door, you know you're in a Russian aircraft. There's no minimalist glass panel aesthetic here. Instead, an expanse of analog gauges, sturdy rotary switches, and blinking indicators fills the pilot's view. Yet beneath the old-school appearance lies a hybrid design philosophy mechanical reliability combined with essential digital assistance. The Tu-214 includes modern electronic flight management systems, but retains traditional backup instruments, ensuring that if the electronics fail, a real risk in sub-zero conditions, the aircraft can still be flown safely using manual gauges and pure pilot instinct. This balance between modern and traditional defines the 2214's spirit. Earlier Soviet aircraft typically required three crew members, two pilots, and a flight engineer, but this aircraft meets modern standards with just two. Advanced engine control, automatic monitoring, and warning systems eliminated the need for a flight engineer reducing weight and operational costs. Yet Tupolev never abandoned redundancy. In emergencies, pilots can rely entirely on mechanical systems, a safety net that purely digital cockpits simply can't match. All of this makes the aircraft something quite special, not a mass-market airliner, but a technical statement. It doesn't try to be sleek, quiet, or fashionable. It was built to survive to keep flying through ice wind and isolation. The 2214 is special, but you might still wonder why Russia chose to revive an aircraft design from the Soviet era. Well, this will reveal the reason. If you think it is just another passenger jet, this will make you think again. Behind its seemingly exterior lies something far more extraordinary, a transformable strategic platform capable of becoming almost anything Moscow wants it to be. With only a configuration change, it can turn into a transport aircraft, an airborne command post, a communications hub, or even a high-altitude spy plane. Indeed, Russia operates the 2214 pu the airborne command post of the Russian president, essentially the country's own version of Air Force One. Then there's the 2214 on or open skies, a reconnaissance variant built under the International Open Skies Treaty, fitted with powerful optical sensors and radar to monitor foreign airspace openly. But the real intrigue lies in the 2214R, one of the most secretive versions, an advanced electronic intelligence aircraft equipped with Alint and SIGINT systems capable of intercepting radar communications and tactical data from hundreds of kilometers away. Supporting these are the 2214SR and 2214SUS Airborne Command and Communication Centers that often accompany the President's aircraft on diplomatic or military missions. 
And finally, there's the 2214C, a versatile cargo version for logistical operations. A single airframe yet capable of serving nearly every role imaginable from government transport to reconnaissance electronic warfare and civilian use. This is something no Western aircraft can do. This unparalleled flexibility allows Moscow to cut development costs, maintain its domestic aerospace production, and stay self-reliant amid Western sanctions on aircraft components. Today, the aircraft operates across both commercial and government sectors within Russia. The Federal Security Service FSB flies two Red Wings, one Rossiya Airlines 13, the Russian Air Force 6, and Tupolev itself 2. Other operators include North Korea's Air Koryo. Besides Aeroflot, the symbol of Russian aviation has already ordered over 40 new aircraft to temporarily replace its grounded Boeing and Airbus fleets. Rossiya Airlines and Red Wings are expected to receive their first units between 2025 and 2026. Domestic carriers describe this jetliner as fuel-efficient, reliable, and particularly resilient against Russia's harsh weather conditions. Born in the 1990s yet reborn in a new era, the 2214 is no longer a relic of the past but a bold emblem of Russia's aviation revival. Despite its powerful comeback, the road for this jetliner is anything but smooth. It faces obstacles from every direction. External pressure, internal limitations, and the weight of time itself. In 2022, AIN reported that Russia would officially restart production of the Tu-214 with the first aircraft expected to be delivered in 2024. According to the state corporation Rostec, the goal was ambitious, 70 brand new jets within six years with the Kazan Aviation Production Association Capo already working on the first batch of 20 airframes. But soon reality struck that it's impossible. The harsh sanctions imposed by the West crippled Russia's commercial aviation industry. Ambitious projects like the MC-21 and Superjet were effectively frozen as supply chains collapsed and Moscow scrambled to rebuild entire aircraft using fully domestic parts from the smallest bolt to complex avionics. The newspaper Commerçant later revealed that all domestic aircraft deliveries had been delayed until at least 2025-2026. And yet Tupolev refused to stop. At Kazan, the 2214 production line began roaring back to life modernized machinery, upgraded avionics, and every Western-dependent component replaced with Russian-built systems. The goal is clear to bring this aircraft back into full-scale production with at least 10 aircraft per year and a target of 20 annually by the end of the decade. At a time when the MC-21 is still years away, the 2214 stands as a bridge between the old and the new, between Soviet heritage and Russia's modern technological ambitions. But you might wonder if the MC-21 already exists, why does Russia still need to revive the 2214? Is this really necessary? If you want us to analyze this, leave a comment below. Thank you for joining us and safe travels.